Well, it's light snow today, it's supposed to get about 10 centimeters, which isn't anything to be too terribly concerned about, but I've decided to go out to the cabin, have lunch, and spend the afternoon. I've been out already and started the fire. Too dangerous to walk on the highways where I normally walk on a day like this. Reduced visibility, cars can't see you. You never know when one of the government plows is going to come by at high speed. And also, the light snow covers patches of ice, so you don't know where they are until you step on them. So, I'm housebound for the day and on my way out to the cabin. Hello, everybody. I'm in the corner by the stove. Uh, I've got a good fire going in it. It's putting out lots of heat. Uh, but in the far end of the camp cabin, down where the uh, camera is set up right now, the thermometer says it's 9 degrees in here. Well, it said it was zero when I came in. Um, the internal thermometer never reads lower than zero, so I don't really know what the actual temperature might be in here. I've got that sensor still out there in the uh, hoop house um, inside of the covering with the uh, fig trees and the electric cable that's keeping them warm and I moved it uh, down lower. If you remember from my previous video it was up high and was actually touching the heating cable so it wasn't giving an accurate reading. Uh, down lower it uh, has gone down to minus one I think once or twice when the external temperature was minus 16. So I think it's still doing an excellent job of heating it. I think the actual temperature outdoors today is minus uh, six or so. It was when I left the house anyway, and it's reading two degrees today. So that's working very well. If you hear a horrible hiss in the background, I'm running the propane um, uh, Coleman lantern. Uh, makes quite a noise. I don't really need it to read in here or anything. There's plenty of light coming in the windows, but to do any videoing, there isn't really enough light on a cloudy, snowy day like this. Well, I'll try to get a few clips of uh, some birds at the feeder. So far, all I've seen is uh, a blue jay or two, but I've been turned the wrong way, facing the stove, warming up and reading. Other than that, on this video, you'll see some clips out here at the cabin, and then I'm going to take you into the grow room, show you what's happening in there, and to conclude with, I'm making health food donuts. That's quite a joke. <laughs> they are healthier than fried donuts. I've made, this is my second time for making baked donuts. So I really like the things. I allow myself to have one a day. In the morning I joke and say I have a one a day vitamin pill and in the evening I have my one a day donut with tea. I've been attempting to lose some weight since last October. I've been fairly successful at it. I've lost I think 31 pounds to date. Uh, but I don't think I'd be able to lose it all if I completely cut out sweets. I, I really like to have sweets and my cup of tea in the evening. So it's, it's these donuts right now that you'll see at the end of the video. Anyway, let's move on here and have a little look, see if we can't find some birds while I prepare my Just lunch. a little look out the window in the door towards the hoop house. It's not, as I said before, it's not a very serious snowstorm, it's just a gentle falling snow, not due to amount to a lot, and thankfully not much wind along with it, but a really good day to enjoy some hot soup and uh, a wood fire and sit around and read, maybe listen to the radio here in the cabin. Well, lunch is a simple affair, just a can of Campbell's soup, tomato soup warmed up. And then I'll put the kettle on and have some tea afterward. Tea's made with previously frozen water. <laughs> and if you noticed in the previous shot, there's a, I think it's called an igloo, yeah, igloo sports uh, water container over there in the corner, which keeps water quite nice and fresh in the summertime, but freezes it solid inside of it in the winter and I left some water in the kettle the last time I was out here and that was ice when I came out but on the stove for about a half hour and it was boiling away so it's able to dilute my can of condensed tomato soup and I have it just about ready to serve still haven't managed to get any bird clips but I will give it a try in a minute here
not much luck at the bird table today, and which is unusual. Uh, normally in a snowstorm, if it's not a raging, blinding blizzard or whatever, there are lots of birds at the feeders. I don't know, I keep feed out here all the time at this bird table. I come out every day, and there's a junco. I come out every day and uh, put feed on this the same time I put feed on the one up at the house. But I'm not out here enough to see what's happening, and sometimes I wonder if there hasn't been a hawk or, or something around. Um, the uh, seed hasn't been used a great deal in the last week or so. I keep adding seed, but there's always seed left the next day, so possibly there's been an attack out here by a hawk. I've, I've had them take a, a dove a couple of times at the other feeder this winter. I jokingly say they're just feeding at the feeder with the other birds, but uh, it isn't a pleasant thing to watch. Anyway, I can't do any more filming of the feeder or out here this afternoon because the battery is dying in the camera. So. That concludes the visit to the cabin. Well, I'm trying something that's new and different to me anyway. I'll put a link down below to Savage North Garden's channel. He just posted a very good video on what causes your seedlings to become lanky and, uh, you know, kind of feeble and falling over. And one of the things that he does is he puts a fan on them for several times a day on a timer so I'm following suit and I hope that has some good benefits here as well uh, I told him in a reply that my fan is too intelligent to work off a timer so one of these things I, know, I guess I got it at Costco works with a remote control uh, and you can set it to shut off anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours after you turn it on and you can with remote control you can have it oscillate like I have it doing well I set it up to do that and I put it on a timer not the timer that's built in but one that it plugged into on the wall and that was supposed to every hour or so come on for a few minutes and shut off again however it shuts off fine when the power comes back on it just sort of beeps <laughs> to let you know that it's awake now, but you have to tell it what to do. It lost its previous programming when it lost the power. So anyway, no big issue. I come in here many times a day anyway, so I just turn it on and let it go for 30 minutes and shut it off again. So anyway, there's a link down below to a very good video, or the channel that that very good video is. I hope you go and check it out. Thank you. Well, in the end, I had six of the goji berry seeds germinate, and they're just still at the two leaf uh, stage and it does say on the packet that you should wait until there are three or four sets of leaves before transplanting them so I guess I have a while to go there. I've put them over on the Arrow 3 garden under the lights there since I had one cell and I couldn't grow anything anyway there's plenty of room for the pot and they seem to be appreciating the light over there. I have a few packages of the seeds still to give away if anybody's interested. I think I have maybe four or five left. Four anyway. I put five seeds in each of the little brown envelopes and attached it to a photocopy of the information on the seed package. Um, I think I planted maybe six or seven seeds. I didn't count. Not very many. Anyway, I got six plants out of it. so with five of these tiny little seeds. Anybody who wants to try should get several seedlings, I guess, and I have sent a number of them out, but there are still a few packs left, so if you're interested, leave me a PM with your address and I'll drop them in the mail to you. Now for a little look at uh, my chili peppers after they've been pruned, and it's been about a week, I guess, since I pruned them. I think the one that I'm showing you there is the one that I showed uh, when I cut the top off it. It's a cayenne pepper. I think that's the same plant. And as you can see, it has started to grow two new branches coming up from the, from the leaf axles. I'll pan down along here and show you some of the other ones. They're all doing quite well. Uh, there are 12 plants all together, uh, four each of three different varieties and they've all been pruned now. 
had their first pruning anyway. How much longer it'll take before they require their next one, I don't know. I will see if I can't move you over in here. That is the black round black Spanish radish sort of laying off to one side a bit but it's growing its second set of leaves so, so far so good and finally just a little look at the broad-leafed chives which are starting to thicken up a little bit more well that's it for a look around the grow room let's go bake some donuts well, today I'm making health food donuts. I don't think there really is such a thing. However, these are baked, not fried. So that does get rid of a lot of the calories from fat anyway. I've only been doing this a short time. I first, Actually, my second time, the first batch was a, a mix that I bought along with the donut baking pan. It was okay, but I had a feeling that uh, made from scratch would be better. So that's what we're going to give a go at here right now. I can read the contents off here. There are two cups of all-purpose white flour. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar and two teaspoons of uh, baking powder. A quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And I really don't tend to measure either one of those. I'll just put a few grinds of nutmeg in. I love the flavor of both of them, so if I get a little extra, it's okay with me. That's about right. It calls for three quarters of a cup of milk. And I'm not going to use milk, uh, regular milk anyway. I like the flavor of buttermilk. And I find if I buy a liter of buttermilk, by the time I've used half of it, the other half is spoiled on me. So I'll show you a product that I substitute with. And this is one teaspoon of salt. For buttermilk, what I'm going to use is this. I guess that's in focus. I buy it in the U.S. I suppose it's available in Canada. I, I discovered it a year or so ago. I imagine it's been around for a long time. It's a cultured buttermilk powder. And uh, for every cup of milk, buttermilk that you're going to use in a recipe, you use four tablespoons of this and substitute the liquid with a cup of water. Well, this calls for three quarters of a cup of butter of milk, and I'm going to use buttermilk. So, I've measured out three three tablespoons of the powder. And I think that is all of the dry ingredients. Two eggs, beaten, and one of these eggs. If you've been watching some of my Pinhouse videos here. I'm quite sure was laid by one of my new Chanticleer pullets. I've been thinking now for the last couple of weeks that they're laying eggs. I just really can't prove it because I'm getting more small eggs uh, than I normally get. I have banties which lay small eggs. I think I'll add the other liquids to this. That's the three quarters of a cup of water. wearing that before it's over with here. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Anyway, when I went out to gather eggs today, several times I found one of these new pullets up in the nest, but as I went in, this one got up and I reached in where she had been and found a very nice large egg, so I think they are starting to lay for me. And I'll just combine the the liquid in the dry here. Combine it until they're relatively few lumps. Okay. 
and it's a different consistency than the mix was. The mix was much thinner. I think this might work better as far as piping it into the pan. I plan to try that anyway. It wasn't too easy getting the donut pan filled without trying to pipe it, so I'll come back in a minute when I'm ready to attempt piping that into the pan. Well, one thing I forgot to add when I was recording there a few minutes ago is a tablespoon of uh, shortening. And as you can see, I've already attempted piping one of these full, so we'll carry on and do a few more here, I guess. I may have to fill this bag up again. I didn't didn't put it all in the bag. This recipe is supposed to make a dozen. I don't know about you, but when I a recipe says it's going to make three dozen cookies, I'm lucky if I get two. So we'll see what happens here, I guess. I think I am going to have to come back and put some more in the bag before I do the last one. Anyway, I will come back after these come out of the oven. They're going in a 325 degree oven and it says for 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes, which I don't think is going to be long enough. The mixed ones uh, went for 375 degrees for 10 minutes and they still weren't done. So I'm sure that these will be in for longer than 10 minutes, but I'll show you what they look like when they can't remember if I said or not, but that was a non-stick pan, but I still spray it. Uh, these things have some sugar in them and they'll, they tend to stick if you don't, I guess. So I have made a glaze and I'm going to dip them in a glaze and then uh, dip them in sweet coconut. I did manage to get a dozen out of it. I have some that are larger than others, but the glaze is a cup of icing sugar mixed with two tablespoons of hot water, boiling hot water. Just using it to stick on the coconut. Well, I won't make you watch me do all of these. Come back once I've got the kettle boiling and a cup of tea ready to go with one of them. I'll let you know what they taste like. Well, the tea is ready and so are the donuts. I'll select one, of course, one of the larger ones here. Not bad at all. They're quite light. Uh, I haven't bitten into one of these yet, but the ones that I made out of the, the mix uh, a different than a, a fried donut, I suppose, just because there isn't the oil or the grease, but quite tasty. Mm. And I like that with the uh, coconut and the glaze on top. Very nice, too. Well, I hope you give these a try. And thank you very much for watching.